cross-site tracking for use in advertising isn't going anywhere, but the way it works in its current form through the use of third-party tracking cookies certainly is. How it's going away, I don't think anybody actually knows yet, because all of the big ad providers and all of the big data companies all have their own different methods to do it. So Google has their federated learning of cohorts, which was completely trashed and now has been replaced with the Topics API. Microsoft has their Parakeet, and now you have a really unlikely pair joining together, Mozilla and Meta. And they are jointly developing a system called Interoperable Private Attribution. Now, I want to be very clear on something, as there's been a lot of misinformation going on around this post, and also the proposal linked inside. This is not a partnership, at least from what I can see, between Mozilla and Meta, or a partnership between Firefox and Facebook. This is not like how Mozilla is basically entirely funded by Google through that Google search deal. This is two massive companies in the web space working together on web standards. Just because Meta is involved in something, does not mean it is inherently a bad thing. There are a lot of things that Facebook and Meta develop that you have no idea about because they're not malicious whatsoever. So I don't want to rule this out just because Meta is involved. With that being the case though, that doesn't also mean it's inherently good. So, onto the post. Privacy preserving attribution for advertising. Advertising provides critical support for the web We've been looking to apply privacy-preserving advertising technology to the attribution problem so that advertising can get answers to important questions without harming privacy. Now, privacy-preserving advertising might sound like a bit of an oxymoron, and as we'll see in just a bit, the implementation being proposed here certainly doesn't contradict that. So attribution is how advertisers know if their advertising campaigns are working. Attribution metrics that allow advertisers to understand how their advertising campaigns are performing. Basically, it's things like your click-through rate and other things that tell you if people are actually engaging with your ads, if your ads are actually effective. Now, the rest of the post does a pretty horrible job at explaining what IPA is, how it works, and how it actually preserves your privacy. Luckily, at the bottom of the post, though, they did link to an overview explaining everything that's actually going on. This is something like 23, 26 pages, something like that. 24 pages, I guess. I read all of it, and let's talk about what it actually is. So IPA is a new proposal for a cross-browser API for collecting these attribution metrics. So this isn't something made just for Firefox, if this is something that was accepted, it would be inside of Chromium, it would be inside of Safari, it'd be inside of Gecko even. Basically, it'd be something accepted as a web standard that everyone abides by. The reason why we need something is because the current attribution practices have little to no regard for privacy whatsoever. You include a third-party tracking cookie, you collect as much user data as you want, and you apply no amount of anonymization unless you're in the EU, in which case there are certain laws you have to abide by, but everywhere else, it literally doesn't matter. So every single user is assigned a key. This key is referred to as a match key. Now, this key is writable by apps and websites, but only accessible by the browser and the operating system. Sites themselves should not be able to query the key from the browser because this key basically acts as a unique identifier for that user. And with that, that basically eliminates any need to do browser fingerprinting, for example. So what this key is used for is used for event generation. So for things like ad impressions and ad conversions. In the documentation, this is referred to as a source event and a target event. Now, when I say user, I do mean user and not device. So this match key should be consistent across all of the devices used by that user. This could be assigned by, say, logging into a website or other means where you can identify who that user is, and this key is then assigned through a match key provider. Now, in many cases, there will not be a method to actually identify 
individual users in this case, so they will have different match keys based on the different devices, but there may be methods to go and group these together. Now, where the so-called privacy preserving comes into this is the way the data is collected and stored. So normally when you have a third-party tracking cookie or any sort of data collection method, all of the data is stored in one location. Maybe you have multiple servers, but you're storing all of the same data and it becomes very trivial to build profiles based on that data. In this case though, the data is actually going to be split up amongst multiple parties, so no individual party holds data that by itself could make a profile. No data that by itself would actually be valuable. But at some point the data has to be brought together in some way to provide useful output data. So the way this is done is through a system known as multi-party computation, otherwise known as MPC. So the match keys I mentioned earlier, they're called match keys because they are used for matching events together. So let's say we have two individual parties. So the data is split in half. So the data on both systems, they will go and individually match events together. And then once the events are matched, they will calculate aggregate results and share the aggregates together, but not the raw data. So these aggregates will provide you things such as view through, click through, return on ad spend, conversion lift, cross publisher attribution, basically standard sort of ad metrics. So then when someone wants to get data out of the system, they can only query for the aggregate results. They cannot find individual events based on individual users. So they couldn't see, okay, Brody clicked on this ad at this time. Jim clicked on this ad at this time. There is this level of conversion, maybe this much on how much is spent on the ad. They can't see it for individual users. They can only see it across all of the ad campaign. Now there is no denying in some ways, this is certainly better than the current state where anybody can just do whatever they want, but improvement is a spectrum. And just because it's better, does not mean that it's good. The first issue we have is you need to trust the key providers and you need to make sure they are not leaking data because if they leak these keys to say the parties calculating the aggregates or maybe the companies that are making use of the data, now they have individual identifiers for every single user. That's a pretty bad thing. It is the state we're in with third party tracking cookies, so it's no worse than what we have, but it's still just as bad. The second problem we have is while you and I, along with companies interacting with this system, cannot query out individual user data, this does not mean that just because it's split up amongst multiple parties, that data is actually safe. You need to also trust the different parties and make sure they're not sharing data because if you have these two sets of data that by themselves are not useful and both the parties are run by the same people, it's very trivial to share that data and just build profiles that you can already do with the current system. Yes, in a perfect world where that doesn't happen, this system could function. But this is where we get into the problem with Meta being involved. Meta is a company that likes to have as much user data as possible. And I find it very hard to believe that they are working on a system for basically centralizing user data collection, but don't want to be involved in the backend side running the servers. Maybe it would just be Mozilla running them. And sure, I could probably trust Mozilla. But if you have Meta at all involved in that backend server control, you know what Meta does. Now the system will also introduce a level of noise to make it harder to build actual useful profiles, but I don't see that really getting in your way, especially when the current system surely is considerably more noisy than anything that you would currently see, especially with the fact that you can easily clear your cookies, you can swap devices and all of that fun stuff. And then the third issue is there is no word on whether users will be able to request their data to actually be deleted. Sure, let's just say that having the data centralized on these servers makes it more private. I don't believe that, but let's just say that it does. Wouldn't it be even more private to give users the ability to get their data deleted? I think so, and I think that most people will probably agree with that. 
when it came to Google's federated learning of cohorts, it was very easy to understand why it was a bad thing. It basically put users into a small group, gave that group an ID that you could query, so if you wanted to fingerprint those users, you basically knew that user was in this group of a few thousand people, and you can throw everything else out. This, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated because they do a fairly good job at making it sound like it is more privacy respecting, but there are so many points where the privacy respecting can just fall apart completely, and I don't trust that this could actually be held together in the theoretical sense of the proposal. Mozilla has been interested in privacy-preserving advertising and telemetry for quite a while. This system they've proposed here is basically a web-based version of their Prio telemetry system. They've likely seen how well companies like Brave are doing with their privacy ads and wanted to somehow get involved with that, but this is the first time they've made a real step towards that. Now, I didn't go over most of what was in the proposal because most of it is technical jargon. But I fully encourage you to go and read it for yourself. I will leave it linked in the description down below. It is a very challenging read because it's it's just technical garbled gook. But if you can sit through it, I would love to hear your opinion on the matter. But if you don't, I would still love to hear your opinion in the comment section down below. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. And that's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.